going to be a, a Rob and Marcus show here. All right. Well, first of all, I'm going to just cover a couple different things, and then we're going to have Marcus come up and actually show you how to cut the box. But uh, these are the bo books that we started off with. I'll pass them out. There's building beautiful boxes. This is the basic, it tells you all the things that you need to do. I thought I got an echo in here. Yeah. It tells you all the different steps to do for the procedures. This one's a second one built by the same people, and they have a lot more exotic, different um, patterns and other methods of doing it. So basically, you'll, you can learn everything off of here. This is just another source. I've gone online, and there are some people that have the patterns on there for the bandsaw boxes, but most of them just don't give them away, and there is a ton of you know, one's inside of here. I'll go ahead and pass these things out. I'm gonna pass them around. Um, I kind of like doing the bandsaw boxes as a presentation in here, because you can involve a lot of different tools. You know, some things we do, you just use a bandsaw, you use a drill press, you use a lathe or something like that. Sander. And you can do everything here. So, you know, and I, I, you know, I looked at it as a great way to justify tools. You know, we always talk about, you know, the wife wants you to make something or the husband wants me. And you just tell them, well, I'll just need another part. And I, put, I figured out here you're going to need, as a minimum, you need a table saw with a fence and miter gauge, a bandsaw, joiner, planer, 14 types of sanders, including a spindle sander and a <laughs> belt sander. Uh, let's see, a router, router table, drill or drill press, anything else you can sneak in there on the list and say, you know, I needed this. So. The $15 box. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. So, I mean, I. You can do it as elaborate as you want. The book actually shows three pages of tools that you need. And I got it down to about 12. You know, I, I figure there's a, like oh, overkill. Well, it depends on how you're doing it. You know, you, one of the first things you're gonna do is you're gonna select your wood. And for any of the pay, ones that are in that first book in there, you need um, wood boards that are about six or seven inches wide and no more than 53 inches. So 53 inches worth of wood you can cut up to make any bandsaw that's in there. Now you're better off using hardwoods and not something that really chips out bad. You know, I've, I've made them out of uh, wingay and stuff like that, and you got all the splintering and stuff on it. So you know, they're harder to use something like that. You don't want to use softwoods. You know, you can make them out of two by fours if you just make them one to make it, but you don't want to make them out of uh, certain materials. Cedar, cedar is too soft, and you know when you put it in it. Unless it you're making a duck. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like that book that that Mike brought in because you have a lot of different things other nut they don't use a classic bandsaw box. He's got different animals, different things, so that's a really useful book that he's got there. And when you say cedar, are you specifying western red or eastern uh, western or eastern? I wouldn't there specify hardness. anything. <laughs> well, I mean, your, your western cedar though is a lot softer yeah. than yeah. your eastern cedar. Is. Yeah, I think it's western cedar is con like construction. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I, I, scraps I, from a sauna. Yeah, I just wouldn't use a real soft type of wood either way. And one thing you do want to do, you do want to laminate wood to put it together. If you take a block that you just get a tree where most of us take our trees from our logs and cut it to shape, you get it like four inches by four inches, you can make something other. But but the problem is we know how much that wood's going to move. If you have kiln dried wood and you laminate and put them together, you know you start off making a block like here. If you use three quarter inch wood, you get you use five pieces to, to put it on there. If you use one inch wood, you do four. But you can make them as big as you want or as little as you want. You know, like the pattern that I made here was the same thing that Marcus did, only I just made it bigger to make the drawers bigger. You know, I, I like making these things. They look good when you're done. But if you only have this much room inside, they really don't serve much of a purpose. You know, so everyone that I've ever made, I've given away except for a couple I put in a, a case there. So anyway, um, I want to start off by showing you the actual pattern. And you can see from that, you know, how to enter it and how to make the shape and how you come in and out and different things. And there's different matters of complexity. Now, there's a real simple one. Well, the first thing I want to show you is this. This is a checklist to make sure I brought everything I needed today. Because when I did the one on the screwdriver handles a couple weeks ago, I had to go to the store here and buy uh, a chuck. I had to buy something else because I, you know, I, I prepared for three weeks and I had all the stuff on the table and I take it back and use it on my lathe and then I come here and didn't have it. So anyway, I, I covered that this time. So 
Okay, so look at the pattern here. Okay, each one is spelled out in the book and tells you exactly where you're going to enter it at and, and each cut. So this one's really simple. You come in at this point where it says one, just follow it to here, and then you're going to have to take it back out. And on most bandsaws, if you're using a 3 16th blade on these, so you don't want to back it all the way out without, with it running. You know, a lot of times when you do that, you're going to catch and just pull your blade off. So usually what I do when I do it, I turn it, take it off. And that part on the end, I use a screwdriver and I'll open this <coughs> opening up a little bit so I can get the blade out easier. So, so you, on this one, you just go down to here, turn it off, take it out, and then you go back here. And that's all you got to do to follow the pattern on that. And then we'll go to the next one. It's the same type of thing. You know, this one, you're going to start with one, and you just take and cut that part off and get rid of it, and then two and three. So you just pull the drawers off. So that's another one that's not very hard. And then you get into something like these, which is, you know, you've got to follow, if you follow this thing around, you got to come in with this one all the way along this line and around to here. And then you got to back it all the way out. And then you go into number two, which is, you get over here and you go back around here. So it's over and over and over again, you're changing throughout your pattern. So I was not gonna do that one today. I got enough excuses to mess up. Okay. This is the actual pattern we're gonna use today. Marcus is gonna cut it out, but what we're gonna do is gonna come in right here and go all the way around to over here to the end. And then after we get stopped at that end, we're gonna turn it off, raise the guide up so we have the clearance, and lift it up and then take that drawer out. After you take the drawer out, you got everything out of the way, then you just back it up to here, and then you come here and then you make the second one and do the same thing. So we're gonna do that one, and like I said, this is just a larger version of the same pattern. Okay. So the first step that you're gonna do after you glue it up, we glued it up and clamped it and had them all done, so this has been glued for two weeks. But we glued it up, clamped it, and had it ready, and what well, he would start from taking off the back. That's the first step. You got that black, the, uh, your block. You cut off about quarter inch to three eighths of an inch off, off the back. And then you put that aside and then you're gonna cut out the whole inside. And we'll have that at the time. First thing what I wanna do, I'm gonna show you how to put it on your block. And when you look at that, there's several ways of doing every step that we do on this process. And some of the methods that you do, like in Tarja, people put the blue tape all over it, and then you spray it on a pattern and put it on there. I just spray it on the back of here and put it on. And some of the other methods, some people take tracing paper, just take tracing paper, put it down, and then just trace everything out of here, which seems like a whole lot more trouble to me. But anyway, I'm gonna spray this and just let it sit for a minute while I'm babbling here. When you spray the, I use 3M45, and some people use 3M77, you let it set on there for about a minute and stuff until it gets tacky. If you just spray it and put it on right away, the pattern is gonna move around, it's got to be able to dry very well, and you know, 30 seconds or so, it tacks up really good. And I don't know how you get it off your fingers. You know, I put that on there, and I walk around for the rest of the day, I wash your hands three or four times. Solvents doesn't really do it. Well, that's why I try different things. Okay. I'm trying to put it on so the bottom line here is even with the wood. So when you cut it, you don't have to cut the bottom of the box when you cut it out when you're done. Did you plan on your stock or use it as a cake? I just use it as a comb. You know, they go through a lot of stuff in the book about making sure you're using a, a joiner, planer, and all the different stuff. If, as long as you're smooth and it's going to glue, it's going to go in between it, you know, it doesn't make much difference. And glue the whole surface? No. Yes. Yeah. And it squeezes out all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I get to use all kinds of glue. It's great. <laughs> so, uh, they go through a lot of effort of talking about making you get the board squared up. 
it doesn't make a difference because when you go to cut this thing out of here, you, you're just going to go all the way through here. You don't care about what's on the side. Now, I, I do want to make sure I get one edge squared up so when I cut the back off, I can run along the bandsaw and it does a good job for that. And that's the only thing I square. Now, this one I cut it up just for show. You know, at, at the home, I, I didn't really care because you, you're going to take it apart and throw it away. And then, have you guys seen the little skateboards that the kids are using now? The little, little tiny ones they use with their fingers and they do the stunts and stuff with them? Anyway, my grandson's got a bunch of them. And I figured out if I'm cutting this thing over here and I get to about here instead of going all the way around and I come around like this and I cut straight across, he's got a great ramp he can go up on down. So he's got like a dozen of them sitting at the house now. Okay. Let me set this up and get Marcus to come up here. He's going to be our official cutter outer. Explain your setup tool, even though we sure. had it last week. Sure. I set this up using this fence on here. I wanted it higher than a regular fence that comes with this. So we've got the high rise on here, but to line up with the blade and keep it straight all the way, I set, got this for three and three quarters from you know, this part of the slot to here. So I put this on here and do the same thing on the other side and then tighten this down. And that way I know I got the perfect gap that I wanted, which was around a little more than a quarter inch. It doesn't matter, it's a random number because you can take it off and put it back on. You don't want to make it too thin. And you know, if you make it too big, it's going to be like in the middle of your board and look a little obvious. So this important jig is just for that. And there's not any use for it other than that. But if you did want to uh, do a lot of stuff with your bandsaw that you're cutting in increments, you would put this on there and then you would take like a one inch block or two inch block. That way you know exactly that you're parallel with it. So I was just going to leave it here with our parts on there. Marcus, if you want to have at it, here's a, uh, he already has safety glasses on. He's got a mask. They won't ding us on those two. They'll probably ding me because I'm sure I'm going to be talking. I'll take it off and put it on and, you know. That is maple and poplar. We went to Swanee Lumber and we got, I got four boards that were just gorgeous. They were about this wide and eight foot long and they were almost all green. I just thought that looked, I never saw a poplar that was that perfect of a dark color like that and consistent. So I bought four boards of, I didn't need any at all at the time, but you know, you gotta have something for bragging rights. You ready? Helps if he's plugged you, in. You want power, oh. Okay, you ready out of the way, sir? I'm plugged in.
Okay. All right, what we're going to do, if you raise this up, get it out of the way, he can lift this up, and we get this one completely out of the way for here, and put it back, and it's easy for him to get out. Now we need to bring it back out, and if it moves on its own, just back it out. Let's see how much I can get a gap on here. Okay. Now he's got to go back in on this one to get the other section out. So we'll leave it right there. Yep. Okay. How many teeth per inch on your... Ten. We just had half that conversation, and I didn't realize that whole time I'm mic'd up as I'm over here talking to him on the side. Well, what, what was that? It's ten teeth per inch. Ten? Yes. Three sixteenths, ten teeth... I guess we're going to have to use that. Can you get it? Okay. All right, well, hold up a second. I'll, we'll tape it to the back. Okay. So to go over some of the steps of the process that we've done already, you first thing you do is cut off the back. That way you can reach it so when you cut through to cut the drawers out. Cut the drawers out, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use uh, two-sided turner's tape to put on the back to attach the back in this case. Normally what you do is you glue it and let it sit up overnight. So I'll do that while he's going to be cutting off the, the ends of the, the two drawers. I've got one circling around so as soon as it gets back up here I'll have him start with this one and we'll go to there. Now one thing that I didn't mention earlier is on the back of here when you cut these off Usually what you do is you mark it like one and one, two and two if you're doing more than one. That way you know that you're getting it back in the same orientation. You don't actually have to have it in the same orientation, but it's a lot easier. If you've got, when we were cutting there, I noticed we were cutting a little bit off. We are cutting a little bit more at the bottom than we were at the top. Once you put it together, it won't make a difference. Yeah. Do we have the other piece coming around? Who's got the back? <laughs> the, the, the back that I want to put back is what I'm looking for. He needs a yeah, Yes. <laughs> well, actually, I got to put the back on is what I'm looking for. Where's the other drawer? The other drawer? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do that as I explain it. Yeah, I glue it up and clamp it, 
But for this, we want to get it done. And No, actually, there's two different ways of. Oh, let me wait till I'm done here. Okay. Hey, that's nice. Okay. One of the questions that Bob was just asking if we clamp it, when we get ready to glue it, if we clamp it to close up the saw curve. And if you look at the way your drawers fit, if they fit in there loose, you don't have to worry about that, but a lot of times what people do is they end up putting a wedge in here to keep it open. Now, I've, I've done it both ways, and you know, with a 3 16th blade, when you're cutting that thing, you've got enough play inside there that you don't have to worry about it either way. You want to make sure that you can get, fit them in there, but by the time you get done sanding them, the drawers are a lot smaller than what you want most of the time. So, okay. Anyway, let's do. Online, the guy showed actually putting glue in that joint and pulling it together. Yeah, it depends on how sloppy you were cutting it. Marcus does a fine job, so we don't have to do that here. We don't use glue, we use corn. <laughs> Ready? So anyway, uh, the next step is going to be to take off, to cut out the drawers that are on the inside. Now, once we've taken this part off of here, you no longer have a pattern on here. There's a couple of different methods. You can go out, when you're printing it out, you put an extra pattern, and then you cut this out and put it on there, on there, to put on there. That's one method. Now, what I like to do, I put this on here. I look at where the drawers are at and I pull this back a little bit so I can see where the lines line up. And I have a very important tool from Peace Rig I'll show you in a minute. So anyway, you, uh, I mark it here, like that for the drawers. And then you come down with this index guide. Now the only thing you have to do on these things you want to do, you have a slot in between the drawers that to separate two drawers. If you wanted to be creative, you can change the drawers and just have one big drawer. But it does give it support on the side, something to glue to if you keep that in there. So I take this thing, I go to where my mark's at, and I come down and I want to leave it where I have at least about three eighths of an inch or something on this part here. So I'll bring it over, come across, and come up. And this is how I'm going to draw the drawers. This is really the wood is really dark at this point here, so it's kind of hard to, uh, I'm not sure how well you're able to see this. But just as long as Marcus can see it to cut it, we're good. And we're cutting it out. The first couple that he cut out at the house, I was showing him on there. You know, he, he was trying to go over here and make that sharp curve. With a 3 16th blade, you can, but you have to really maneuver it and take your time. What I do is I cut straight down the line to here and down to here, and then I'll cut from here around and make a curve. Take that section out in there. I don't need those pieces anymore. It's nice to make these boxes because you end up with byproducts. You end up with, eventually we're going to put handles on, and you have the parts of it. You cut that up and you can use that for your handle. And we have a few different options to handle. But another thing you can make, you can make things for scroll sawers. When I was done, I had these left over, and I'm sure they can make something out of these. So, anyway, if you want to cut this one, we need to lower it down a little. And I'll mark the other one. So,
Oh, you got it for that? Okay. That's it. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Okay, we had some trouble with the alignment of the blade and stuff on there, so we, we got by. Not as, not as good as what I would have wanted to. And if we had any farther to go, I was just going to turn it off. We're not going to really glue this, but we're going to put it together as a step. Okay. Now, like everything else, you have different steps that you want to do on it. If you marked it with your um, tracing paper, you know, this would be out of the picture, and we're not going to bother doing the other one today. We'll just go ahead and do one. But anyway, what I do is when I get the pattern on there to get it off, I use paint thinner. Just put it on there. I let it set for like 30, 40 seconds, pull it off, and and take it off of there. Now if you use a blue tape, you just pull the whole thing off. Or if you traced it with carbon paper, you don't have to worry about it either way. But anyway, you're going to put these on here, and I'm not going to bother with all the steps on it, but you would put your parts together. After you've got them all cleaned off, you sand them and everything. And I am going to do that. I want to sand this one and show you how I do sanding before I, I put it on. So let me go ahead and go back to there. I brought a choice of sanders here. When you're doing these things, you, you don't want to be limited to a hand sander. I'm not going to do anything without a cord on it. <laughs> so I'll put the mask on when I actually get started. But this is the one I bought as a spindle sander from Harbor Freight. And I paid $89 for it. And I've had it for like eight years. It works perfect. 
you know, this one, I like it because I'm doing a wider part on it, but you take this apart and you use it as a spindle sander. I've never used it as a single post on it because I've got this one to do that. So, you, uh, it's a pretty easy bandsaw box that we have here. Thank you. <laughs> here. We're not, we don't have any real sharp curves that we're going to get into on this one. And when I get on there, you have the different spindles. I've got one that's a lot smaller than this. I can get into really sharp areas. But I picked this one on purpose to make it easier for the, the display there. Uh, there's several things that you do and don't want to do on here. You want to clean this up somewhat, but you don't have to clean up a lot because I'm going to use a flocking on there where we're going to put an adhesive on here so you won't see much in there. But if you do have like here where you stopped the blade and started it and everything, if you don't clean that up, you will see the different levels on the flocking. Now when you sand these things from the drawers, you don't want to sand too much off the front or the back because you're going to have to put another part that matches up with it. And it wouldn't do any good to sand all this and then sand that one because it not, might not fit. Okay, go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> Let's do it the right way. <laughs> I use these every day. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can still hear me with a mic. Okay, that is a thrill with a mask on. Okay, I usually start off with the smaller ones just to do the inside of the drawers, and I do them all at one time, and I'm not going to worry about trying to get all the marks and stuff out of this one at the time. I've got ones that are all glued up that are ready. Uh, you want to glue it up on here. We're going to put the sides on next. We'll glue them up, and we'll clamp them down. Now, there's different, uh, when you get ready to clamp these things, obviously you have a front and a back. If your bandsaw is cutting straight, you should be able to, that one's off now. Okay. If your bandsaw is cutting straight, you should be able to put these right on there, just like that. Now, the only difference is, you can see the way that was cutting. See the angle that's on that? Now, if you went and reverse these, you know, you're going to be completely wrong on, on the back there. It won't sit up right. So when I did one of the ones that I did right here, I reversed them on purpose. Because when I got done cutting it out and I looked down here, it looked just like this on there and the inside looked like this. And I wanted that shown the other way, so I just swapped them around, which fit pretty good, but I had to clamp them better. Normally you can clamp these after you put the sides on with these little clamps like this because you don't need much pressure. But being I was using them on the wrong side of the box, I had to really clamp down and, you know, I had five clamps of these on this little box, but I, I like that drawer so much better on that side than I did the, the, the plain white fence like that would have been on there. So anyway, you know, clamping them up is, I don't know if I'm even going to bother putting them on there, but you want to set them down, figure out which way it goes on, and then put your little clamps on. <laughs> Let me try the other way. No, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure I had the right ones for the thing there, but anyway, you're going to glue it up, put it on there. The big thing you want to do is make sure of the, the widest part that you got there that you can get it right. You know, on the end, if it doesn't match up exactly, when you're sanding that thing, you know, you can sand it all smooth and get it on there. So anyway, the next step, I just use Type-On 2, 
glue it up, clamp it, leave them overnight. And then in this process, I had three glued at the same time setting over there. And I did mark, you know, number one, number two. But I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and clamp them on there. But let's go to the... Sand the front and back before you put them on? No. No, you don't want to sand the front and back because you're going to throw it off. Like you can see on there, where we did not cut smooth. It's a lot thicker here than there. If you sand that, then you're going to get all cattywampus. That is a technical word, huh? Okay. Okay, we're not going to put the words on. All I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and show you the sanding on the box itself and the drawers after the glued up. So I have an example here that I was going to use to do the drawers, but being those other ones aren't ready yet. <laughs> I put my mask on like I do every time at home. Actually, at home I have the dust collection on it, and I don't worry about it because it really does a great job. But and here we don't. All right, I'm going to start with this one. Yeah, because it was the farthest away. I'm ready when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. When you go on to do this, I've got a small sanding station that I brought in here and left in here. And it works great for almost everything you do, but when you do the bandsaw boxes, you want to keep a consistent, you know, level on here. Now when you're going across here, if you've got a four inch belt, you've got to constantly keep moving to keep it on here. So I cover most of the belt with this one, and all I do is just kind of turn it back and forth and keep it even, you know. When you, uh, it doesn't matter if you take too much off the front. You know, because you're going to end up with a lot thinner than what you want. When you take the drawers there and you cut the front off and the back off, and you take that part of the kerf out, and then you sand it on the outside when you're all done with it, you're taking so much off of it, you're fitting inside the drawer more, and you're not flush. And I'll show you how you handle that in a couple of minutes. But if you take the actual drawers itself, I found when I was doing it that after you're glued up, you know, you've got the inside of it. After you glued up, you have to do the outsides. And I do really good with using that on here to get the sides flush, which was kind of a odd, you know, because this is such a rough grid on here. Okay. Okay, this is about a 60 grid on here, but it did such a great job of flushing it out where you didn't need much. I used this and then I just used a little uh, palm sander to smooth it out after that. But I used that on there and then the only purpose I use for the spindle is to get on the inside of there before you put the front and the back back on. So, next I'm going to go to this one. Oh, you look like you're all prepared here. Okay.
Yes. All right. I'm not going to do too much of this because I actually sanded them at the house so you got them straight. But you know, use whatever you've got. You know, if you've got the drum sanders, you want to do it by hand. I was really surprised when I used the side wheel off of here to, because it's such a rough sample, it's like 80 grit. But it did a fine job of smoothing these things out. So, anyway, that is, um, I want to show you the flocking part so we can make sure that we uh, get that before we get finished. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. The flocking is a really easy process and they sell everything out here. They, they sell the small bags and then you got this huge bag that they get that's like, you know, you can buy like five of the small ones for the price of one big one. So you're better off getting the big one by far. Okay. There's very little bit to it. This is called the flocker. That's F-L-O-C-K-E-R. No, no, that's it. Leave it alone. <laughs> okay. And these is uh, fine particles and everything that's on it. Your, your dust. I've already got this inside of here and it lasts forever. You know, you get a small bag because you're going to put it on there and you, by pushing this in, the air is going to push the microfibers out onto whatever you're doing. It kind of injects it into what you're putting it on. So, we need to get the... When you fill it up, don't push down very fast. <laughs> well, I'll aim it in another direction when I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a lot of different colors for this. I've, I have red, green, and uh, it's not really red, it's, I think it's a burgundy or something like that. Anyway, I have that, green, and black, and a blue. Something on this, I'm just going to go ahead and put blue on it. But this is an adhesive, and you work at a good pace, you don't want to work too fast. I'm only going to do the one drawer, so I'm not putting all the glue on. Now, usually at home, I'll set it up, I'll do two and put it all in there. So. It's like a tar. Bob, I have a suggestion. Never do this in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you do that if you don't want to stay married. Okay. When you're putting this on, you're just putting it on like here. Now, a lot of stuff I skipped that it's in the book is on different methods of uh, when they do it, they put tape on it, off of all this, tape it off. They take the inside and they cover it with shellac. And they let the shellac dry and then they take the tape off and then you tape it up again to put this stuff on. And I've never found any problem with any type of wood of just putting the adhesive on that I would need shellac on there. You know, shellac you use a lot of things because most paint and stuff will stick to it. But I have not found a reason why I needed to do that. So, I'm not overly careful. I try to get it somewhat straight. If you get anything on the top here, just wipe it off when you're done. They have a lot of emphasis on, in the book of not doing this, not doing that. But then again, they always, they also use three pages of tools. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really that picky. What's your working time, Rob, with that adhesive? About 10 minutes? No. no not that Re really, it's only about two or three minutes before it starts to not be so tacky and you have a hard time putting it on. But as long as you get it on there and you keep it wet, you know, like the part I already did, if I go over it when I'm about done, it'll, uh, it'll be fine. But you want to keep it pretty level because when you, if you've got any bumps where you've got this on too thick that you didn't flatten it out, you're always going to have it on the, on the fuzz part when you're done. It's always going to have a bump in there. I want to hurry up and get this done. You have, you have probably four or five minutes working time at least. If I keep running over it, you know, you got more than that, so. That'll be a way of spraying it in. This is like watching paint dry. Oh wait, it is watching paint dry. <laughs> All right, I got one more little part here and I'll be able to use it. You have to be careful what you do when you're putting the, working with the flocking after you get it in there. If you put a little scrape on it or something like that, you know, after it's dry, you'll never get to repair it right. You know, you can, uh, you can wipe it off and you can put flocking on, 
but you'll never be able to get it to match. Because once it's dried on there and you try and scrape apart, you won't get it even with the rest. So, you know, I'm just gonna wipe off the excess a little bit later on when I get ready to finish it. Now, normally you would finish the outside and everything, I was telling you, put the shellac on there, you sprayed all this, you'd have this all done ahead of time before you put the flocking on. So, the flocking would be your last step. I'm only gonna do half of a box on here so I'm not wasting everybody's time. I was told I have to go to lunch when I'm done. I don't. That, the, the book does say to do it, but like I said, I've never found a wood that this adhesive didn't stick to, so I didn't see a reason for it. Okay, now the only thing that's making this go out, I've got the, you're not gonna be able to see the fibers anyway, but you pull it out and the air pressure is gonna push it through these holes. And each time you do it, you do it kind of a sharp jab, and it's kind of injecting it into the part, so it's, I guess, impregnating it into the adhesive, I guess. Now you'll be able to see the difference when you do this that the parts that I've hit on here are no longer shiny. If you've got a spot on it that's shiny, that means you don't have enough on it covering it up. So put it on and that's really all you're gonna do with the part on there. From here, you just let it dry. You know, I kind of tap it a little bit and get some of the extra out, but not very hard. I let it dry overnight, and then after that, you can tap it around, get it all out of here. Now, I've used hardly anything off of this thing of the fibers, and when you're done, you just tap this and put it back inside your flocker. I usually take it out of here and put it in a bag, because I, I, like I said, I've got like four colors, so depending on what I'm using the most. But that was on there. So, okay, now that was the flocking part. Now, one of the last steps after you're all done is putting the handle on it. You gotta have some way of opening up the drawers. And there's, like everything else that's on here, you got three or four methods. Now, as you're cutting up the box, you can save pieces from the box itself. I'll set a couple here. But you can save these pieces like this, shape them to whatever you want, and use that as a handle, glue it on. I don't really like gluing them on because you're gluing it on to something you've already finished. Now you could put this on first before you finished it, but it's still just glue that's holding it there. So you, you can't really put screws or much of itself in there. So one of the methods that I like doing, there's, you have these little knobs like this, you can actually, can you see it? It's just like a little pull knob for a drawer or something. But you can drill a hole and put it in. If you do, you wanna make sure that you're putting it in a part that's gonna line up with right here. So it has a little bit of reinforcement. The screw's only that long. So if your wood's not very thick, you could use that. If you had a lathe, you could turn it. That's right. <laughs> you, know, you know, and you put whatever shapes you want on it. You want one for each drawer. Now there's a couple other methods of doing it. One of the methods that you use on here, I don't have anything to open that thing up. So what I want to do is come over to here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so you got one for each drawer, and I'm gonna make a third hole in this. Okay. All right. So once you put the drawers in there, which I don't know which one I have where, you just push it with your finger on there to push it out. You know, that's one method of doing it. And there's another method, and I'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, can, I, can you hand me that other one that I did over there, the, my messed up one? No, that's not mine, that's Marcus's. That one's not messed up. Right, the one with the oak in the front, okay. Okay, a couple other methods that you can use on here. I cut the back off of this thing here, so where you can see the tabs, all you gotta do is just push your finger to open it up here. 
you can do that or you can take your drawer here and take you know a, a bit and then round a little spot on here we can just put your fingers on and pull it out those are all methods to get it out of there so, so take whatever you want you know just like everything else that's in this bandsaw class you you have so many methods of doing everything I know I haven't covered a few things but the last hole here I have the two holes for that and the last oh, the last one I had was like this and that was so people can know that you did it so you take the uh, put it down there take the ID chip and put some glue on <laughs> And that is way too much glue for what I'm going to put in there. Anyway, and then you just put the thing on there, and that way they know that you did this. <laughs> Got it? Okay. Right. Any questions? So go home. A lot of people made bandsaw boxes, and once you start doing them, it is like a contagious disease. You know, you, you don't want to stop at one. You know, Marcus, every time we show him something, he makes a hundred of them. So, and he's already done designs that I haven't even tried yet, so. He's got a big family. Yeah, 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 well, that's it. So, anyway, have fun, go home, make some. Uh, I have a couple of the patterns up here. The patterns are actually in a book, so you can get them out of there. They do sell the books here. They sell everything you need here. So, have a great day. Good job, thank you. Thanks.